been with football would have been probably mid 80s. Um, just simply following David Cooper. Um, just one or two opportunities to watch him. Just got me engrossed and, and mesmerised by how he played the game and just simply watching him just maybe fall in love with the, the, the game obviously involved in today. And how did it make you feel watching the game, whether it was on telly or a stadium or whether you were playing it? Well, most of that time was built around about playing um, and, and obviously going to the games live to watch. So I was, I was very fortunate I was able to do that, where the people that would take me to the Rangers games. Um, as I say, David Cooper was the one that, that got me caught up in football. Um, just you know, the, what he could do with a ball was, was for me, it was, was amazing. So it was something that I, I kind of just got caught onto. Um, I was left footed myself and um, I wanted to try and copy David Cooper as much as I possibly can. Unfortunately, you had to retire prematurely due to injury. How do you deal with those sort of emotions going through your head? Yeah, I had to retire from playing at 24. So I was, uh, as I said, I was at Mullow for two years. From there, I spent a couple of years at Stirling Albion, which was my first, first kind of first team involvement. Um, but it was at Stirling Albion where I got my most serious injury. Um, prior to that, I'd obviously had, had two operations in my knee, um, 16, sort of 17 years old. And as I, say, I went to Stirling Albion in the early 20s. Unfortunately, I tore my cruciate ligament. So I left Stirling, went to Partick Thistle. Had probably the most successful spell. As a, as a player in terms of winning things. So we won two successful successive divisions, taking it back to the Premiership, which was big for Partick Thistle at that point. Um, and then, but at that point, I could feel my knee starting to get to a stage where it just became really difficult to train. If I played on the Saturday, it was hard to train until probably Wednesday, Thursday of the next week, preparing again for the Saturday. It ended end up becoming quite a, a cycle. So I moved from Partick Thistle to Queen's Park. So I knew at that stage my, my playing sort of journey was starting to take a different direction. And what do you think are the key qualities that make a successful coach, but especially at a successful club like Rangers? I think you have to believe in, in what you can bring. I think that's a strong part of it. You, you come in and you contribute in whatever role you're in. Obviously, the people will make decisions at certain levels, but I think you've always got to contribute and challenge people so that we make sure that the programme that we have is the best at what it can be. I think the second you get to believe in that where you've got to is the absolute top level and, and that's as far as you can go, I think you'll, you'll end up stalling and going back the way. I think you've always got to think what, what else is out there in terms of what, what else can we do to develop these young players to make sure they have the best opportunity to first and foremost play for us, play for Rangers first team. Um, if not, they have the best opportunity to go and develop a career at another level.